Good morning class. Today we're going to do lesson number 21 on right angles and trigonometric ratios. Now I'm not too sure what you know based on right angles and trigonometric ratios. So I thought what I'd do is just kind of start uh, as basic as possible. Uh, normally we would do this in maybe a week or two weeks or three weeks. Uh, we're going to do it in two online lessons. Um, that's because we're pretty, we're condensing the last three weeks of the course just because we're losing an extra week because we're ending a week earlier, as well as the course has been condensed a little bit because of these online lessons. So we're going to spend the next, this day, this lesson and Wednesday's lesson on trigonometric ratios. And then um, Friday and Monday, next Monday, we'll do probability. And then the last two lessons, which will be next Wednesday and next Friday, will be on um, finding like the mean and the median uh, of some data. Uh, so we're going to kind of plow through these last three units very quickly. Um, so hopefully it will be, um, I won't be giving you too much work. I don't want to assign you a ton of work. Uh, okay, so jump in here. So when we're looking at trigonometric ratios, the trigonometric ratio we're going to look at, you need to have a right triangle. Without a right triangle, the ratios will not work. So a right triangle means that one of the angles must be 90 degrees. So I put a bunch of triangles here. They're pretty much all the same triangle. They're just orientated differently. So as long as you have one angle that's 90 degrees, and we indicate 90 degrees by having that little square. So we're making the square here, 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 and here. Uh, it's saying that that is a 90 degree triangle. So if you see that square, it will tell you it's a 90 degree triangle. And I just realized on the triangle below here, I didn't put that square there, but there should be a square there, meaning that it is a right triangle. So all four of these triangles are right triangles. We have one 90 degree angle. And because when we add up all the angles in a right triangle, they have to be, they're going to equal 180. That is the rule of a triangle. We can only have one 90 degree angle. If we have another angle, that's 90 degrees, we just have a straight line. It wouldn't really be possible. So we would have like a square, they wouldn't connect. So uh, the other two angles are gonna be less than 90 degrees. Uh, so the other two ang angles, we're gonna add up to be 90 degrees because we already have half of the 180 finished with our 90 degree angle. So again, right triangle, you need to have one 90 degree angle. Now looking at trigonometric ratios, so there's three trigonometric ratios that we're going to look at, sine, cos, and tan. So these ratios will pretty much tell you the angle that you have based on the ratio of side lengths. So you have, you're going to take one side length divided by another side length, and that's going to be a ratio. And then that's going to equal your function, so sine, cos, or tan, of that angle. So to give you an example, so here we have a right triangle. We have side lengths A, B, and C, and angle capital A. So if we're looking at angle capital A, we're gonna label some sides. And this is really important to understand these labels. So the opposite side, now the opposite side is gonna be the little a. So that's gonna be the side length that's across from our angle, meaning that none of the edges of, this, of that side length are gonna to be touching our angle. So it's gonna be the complete opposite of our angle. So that's going to be little a. It's going to be the opposite side. Uh, now, the a, b, and c aren't too important. What's really important is the opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So adjacent being b, that's going to be the side length that is touching the angle, but it's going to be the shorter of the two side lengths touching the angle. That's because the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side on the triangle, and that is because it is across from the biggest angle, which is a 90 degree. So the hypotenuse is the side that is across from the 90 degree angle, and it's gonna be the longest side in your triangle. So generally, it's gonna be your diagonal line, but sometimes like if you look at the last triangle I have up here, the hypotenuse is actually that straight line. That's gonna be the longest one because it's across from that 90 degree angle. So again, the hypotenuse is the longest side, it's always the longest side, it's always across the 90 degree angle. The hypo, the hy uh, sorry, <laughs> the opposite, is the side that is not touching the angle, so it's directly across from the angle. And the adjacent is the side that is touching the angle, but is not the hypotenuse. So we're just trying to look at one trigonometric ratio today, which is sine, and then tomorrow we'll look at cos and tan. So sine is gonna be 
the return range ratio of the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So sine of angle A is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. And the opposite is going to be A. Hypotenuse is going to be C in this case for um, this angle. Or sorry, for this triangle and for this angle. So if the angle was, uh, say, up here, we would have a different opposite and different hypotenuse. So let's look at an example. So example one, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do this on your calculator as well, as well as how to do it on a web page. Uh, if you don't have uh, a calculator, uh, sometimes phones aren't very good at doing uh, the calculation you need for example one. Like my iPhone doesn't have the operation for this one. So we have a triangle and we wanna figure out the angle of theta. So this symbol here, this is theta. So we're given all the side lengths. So we're given the opposite is 10 meters. Adjacent is eight meters. Hypotenuse is 12.8 meters. So we know sine of theta is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now the opposite side is going to be this 10 meters because it's not touching the angle at all, divided by the hypotenuse, which is going to be the longest side at 12.8 meters. And that's going to give us a ratio of 0 0.78125. Now, when you're doing angles, even like the fifth digit can actually uh, change the angle significantly, well, somewhat significantly. So uh, I like to keep at least five digits. If there's less than five, that's okay. Like if it's only like oh, 0 0.78, 0, 0, 0. Uh, you just do 0 0.78. But if there's like a thousand, just cut it to five. <coughs> Excuse me. So now what we want to do to figure out theta, we want to take the inverse of sine. Now, if I stop sharing for a second here, this is going to look like on your calculator, um, this symbol here. So we got sine and then sine negative one. That's going to be the inverse. So to get that, we do second function and then we press this button. And that's going to be we get inverse sine. And then we put our angle in, or we put our ratio into put zero point, what was it, seven, eight? I'm just going to do the two digits today because opposite from me <laughs> looking at the camera. Uh, and we get a rate, we get an angle of 51.29. Uh, that's because I didn't put all the digits in, it's a little bit different than what I put in, I think. Or oh, sorry, two sets. I can't read upside or backwards, I mean. So that's how you do it on your calculator. Um, and by not putting in the extra digits, uh, the angle's off by a little bit. So I got uh, 52.2 instead of 50, or sorry, 51.2 sits instead of 51.4, which is the actual angle. So now what I'll do is I will um, show you how to do it on a web page. So for this, uh, you could just Google this. I like to use Wolfram Alpha. Uh, so Wolfram Alpha, if you just type it in, you'll get the site. Oh, maybe I'm not sharing it properly here. Let's see, stop sharing the screen, share screen. All right, this should work. So if you're in Wolfram Alpha, you can just uh, Google this site and you can just do sign. Uh, and then negative one bracket. So that's gonna be the inverse. And in here, you can put your 0 0.78125. And that will give you your angle. Although what it'll do, it'll give you your angle in radians. So what you wanna do, well, your radians is like a, oh, actually this didn't do it properly. Huh, sine negative one. Huh, that should've worked. Let's try this again, sine. Okay, we'll do it this way. So you, you want to type in arc. So arc is pretty much the inverse as well, sine. And you'll do 0 0.78125, and then you'll type in degrees. So it'll give you the answer in degrees instead of radians. And it should, no, oh yeah, there it is. So here is the answer in radians, which is another way to measure an angle, but we're going to do it in degrees. So you'll see the answer here. Um, so arc sine just means the inverse, and then you put degrees so it gives you the answer in degrees. So that is how you do it online. So if you're having trouble with this, uh, please let me know and I can help you through it. I know that wasn't the best explanation. Okay, so let's go back to these problems. <coughs> so that's example one. Let's look at example two. So example two, we are given the angle this time, and we want to find so we're given the hypotenuse, which is going to be the longest side, and we're given the angle. 
So let's find et, which is the opposite angle of this hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine theta. So sine theta is going to equal opposite of hypotenuse. And now we can put in for theta, we have theta equals 40 degrees. So we can put 40 degrees. And hypotenuse equals 15 degrees. So we get sine of 40 degrees equals et divided by 15 meters. So finding sine of 40, what we want to do in your calculator, uh, maybe I'll stop sharing the screen to get the full view. You're going to do just regular sine this time, and then you put your angle of 40 in. And that is going to be your ratio. So you're going to get a ratio of, if I share my screen again, uh, 0 0.643. Uh, but the ratio is not as important to keep so many digits. It's just when you're uh, going to the inverse that it's important. When you're, yeah, when you're using the inverse sign, it's important to keep all the digits. And now here to find x, we want to get it by itself. So we're going to multiply both sides by 15. And that means the 15 on the right side is going to cancel out. Because it's just 15 divided by 15. So we get 15 meters times our 0 0.643 equals x. And that's going to be x equals 9.64 meters. So that's going to be the length of side x. Now, because hypotenuse is the longest side, if we get a value that is greater than 15 meters or greater than a, your, your hypothesis, hypotenuse, sorry, I, maybe I've been saying hypothesis the whole time, hypotenuse, um, I'm getting all the science here, um, then you, you made a mistake in your calculation, you have to try again. Uh, it should always be less than the hypotenuse. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, again, I rushed through this a little bit. So if you have any questions, please ask. We're going to have video calls still on Tuesday and Thursday. And if you're coming to school, you can ask me in class. Uh, so the problems for today are going to be problems A, or 1A, 2A, 3A, and problem 4 on page, I think, 224. But please check the assignment on Google Classroom for the exact time. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you all next time.